Okay, let's try a multiple choice question that has to deal with the law of large numbers. So here we have um, Dr. Stats plans to toss a fair coin 10,000 times in the hope that it will lead him to a deeper understanding of the laws of probability. Which of the following statements is true? It is unlikely that Dr. Stats will get more than 5,000 heads. Whenever Dr. Stats gets a string of 15 tails in a row, it becomes more likely that the next toss will be a head. The fraction of tosses resulting in heads should be close to one half. The chance that the hundredth toss will be a head depends somewhat on the results of the first 99 tosses, and all of the above statements are true. So in reading those, I hope a couple, or hopefully one stands out to you as true, and maybe one or two stands out as false, so let me pick apart the first two that are false, something that I refer to as the gambler's fallacy. So let's take a look at part B. It says whenever Dr. Stats gets a string of 15 tails in a row, it becomes more likely that the next toss will be ahead. This isn't true. When you're, when you're tossing coins, these trials are independent of one another. So don't think that because you get 15 tails in a row, you are due for a head. And I put the do in quotes because I see this all the time at the blackjack tables. Players will say, oh, I've lost five in a row. I'm due for a win. No, you're not. You are always due for a loss. Probability is on the side of the casino. So I don't want you to think that because one outcome happens, the next outcome is more or less likely. It really depends on if the events are dependent or independent. And in terms of tossing a coin, it's independent. You could make the argument at the blackjack table that based on the other cards um, that have been played at the table, then you could look more into a dependent situation and maybe say you were due. But again, that involves card counting and making sure that you're playing at a table with a small number of decks. And casinos typically have like eight or 16 decks in any one blackjack hand just to stop this from happening. So again, gambler's fallacy. I don't want you to start to think you're due for a win because you've had a bunch of losses. And that goes with part D as well. So the chance that the hundredth toss will be ahead depends somewhat on the result of the first 99 tosses. No. All right. All of these trials, especially when coin flipping, are independent of one another. As soon as you realize two are false, then there's no way that E will be the answer. So we have to see what is more true. Is it unlikely that Dr. Stats will get more than 5,000 heads? Or does the fraction of tosses resulting in heads become close to one half? And this is exactly what the law of large numbers is saying, that the relative frequency of your experiment will get closer and closer to the probability of the experiment. In this case, we're tossing a fair coin. This is false, all right? It's, it's actually very likely that Dr. Stats will get more than 5,000 heads. It's very possible he gets 5,001, 5,002. Uh, it just depends. So I won't say it's unlikely at all. Okay, so there's a multiple choice question when we're looking at the law of large numbers. All right, so with that, let's try and do kind of a culminating problem from the first half of this chapter. So let me scooch this up and let's look at example 11 and we're gonna try and make this work the whole way out. All right, so as we read this, you really wanna think what is the variable in this problem, right? It's always find the variable first. So suppose you play a game with a biased coin. You play each game by tossing the coin once. The probability of heads is two thirds. The probability of tails is one third. If you toss a head, you pay $6, but if you toss a tail, you win $10. All right. So what is the variable here? And a lot of times students will say it's whether you flip a heads or a tail. And, and that's true, that is varying, but that's not what we're actually keeping track of for each player. It's part of it, but this is a categorical variable and we're dealing with discrete numerical variables. So you can see in games of chance, it's the amount of money that you win. All right, especially when gambling, we're always interested in money. So our variable here will be the amount of money I win. All right, and you might say, well, I could lose money. Sure, you, you can, and we're gonna address that in just a moment. So is this discrete or continuous? It's definitely discrete. You count your money. All right, and what values does X take on? 
So here's where we handle the fact that we're gonna potentially lose money, right? Because if I toss ahead, I pay six. So in terms of winning, that will be winning negative six dollars, all right? And then in terms of if I toss a tail, I actually win the ten dollars, all right? So we have that going on. And then the next part, part D says construct a PDF. And if you're unsure as to what a PDF is, right, let's refer back to that trait table. All right, we have a discrete variable. We haven't even gotten into the binomials yet, so that's not it. So either a table is given to you or you must make it. There was no table given to us, so we're going to make it. Again, our variable, our sample space will go on the numerator, not on the numerator, excuse me, I keep saying that. Our, our sample space will go on the top row, and our bottom row is gonna be the probabilities. So let's go ahead and do that. I look at my sample space, I see I've got two values, so I'm gonna make a, a chart or a table with three columns on it, because again, I want one column for each value of my variable plus a label column. So let me go ahead and put three columns into this. Okay, so I'm always going to put x in the top row, p of x on the bottom row. My two values were negative 6 and 10. All right, we'll put the dollar sign. We'll just keep the units on there. And then what are the probabilities of each of these? All right, so it said if you toss a head, you pay 6. And the probability of tossing a head was 2 thirds. And the probability of tossing a tail was 1 third. And you can take note that these probabilities do add up to 1. And I, I just want to give you a heads up. If you decide to round here, and by round, I mean if you put 2 thirds as the fraction 0.67 and 1 third as the fraction 0.33, you'll get slightly different numbers than I do. I'll do them both ways, but I just want you to hear this, all right? So if you're going to use instead of 2 thirds, if you're going to tell me that's 67%, and for 1 third, you're going to use 33%, you're gonna get slightly different numbers on parts E through F. So I'll go through this both ways, but I'm gonna do it the fraction way first. So let's scooch this up so we get a full view of all the questions we're gonna be asked. So if we take a look at this, right, the first question is saying, what do we, what is the expected value? What is the mean? So if I'm ever asked for the mean, I'm gonna head over to my, my trait table and I'm going to say, all right, I'm in this column. It's asking me for the mean. I need one bar stats, L1, L2. Okay, so I'm going to put my values of my variable, my sample space into L1, those probabilities into L2. I'm going to crunch one bar stats, L1, L2, and then read the values from X bar. So let's try this. And again, I'll do it two ways, but I'm going to do it the fraction way first. All right, so let's get into my list. And it looks like I have some data in there. It looks like from the problem when we had um, Nancy going to class. Let me clear out those lists and let's put in those values. So we had here negative six and positive 10 and we had two divided by three, right? I'm putting the actual fraction in. So it's got all of those decimals, right? I'm not rounding at 0.67, it's 0.66666667 eventually. They don't even round it here. Um, and then one third here, okay? So if I do this, I go back to my home screen, one bar stats, L1 comma L2, and we can see that the average, the average winnings are negative 67 cents. So if you play this game repeatedly with this bias coin, on average, you will lose 67 cents. So let's write that down.
All right, so we've got an average of negative 67 cents. And actually, that's a little cramped. Let me just rewrite this. Now, let's say you had um, approximated these decimals, right? So I'll go put a different set of values. Let's put 0.67 into L3 and 0.33 into L3. So in case you did it this way, you didn't put the actual fractions, you put the, the decimals. Let me rerun this with the numbers you would have gotten, right? So you, if you had done it that way, you would have had that you had lost negative 72 cents on yours. So let me go ahead and just compare this, right? So if we go this way, you would have gotten negative 72 cents, okay? So I'll put here, if you round fractions off to 0.67 and 0.33 respectively, you'll get slightly different numbers. But the, the, the point of this is the same, that you're losing each time out. All right, it also asked me for the standard deviation. Um, so let me go back to the original way. I'm going to go here. Let me clear this out so you see what I'm doing. Ooh, I do not want to do that. So let me go ahead and just run one of our stats, L1, L2 again. So my original standard deviation, if I do it with the fraction way, it looks like it's over here at $7.54. And it's got a pretty large variability because there's so much space in between negative 6 and 10. Right? That's a difference of $16. All right, and then let's do it this way. If you had rounded, your standard deviation would have been $7.52. So again, still pretty close, but there's a slight different error because of our slight different answer because we rounded off. All right, and then last but not least, if you play this game many times, will you come out ahead? No, you lose on average. So yes, in any given, in any one round of this game, you'll either win 10 or lose six but you're gonna lose six more often than you win 10, and it will average out to you losing in general. So on average, you lose 67 cents, or if you've rounded your fraction, 72 cents. So if you play this game many times, will you come out ahead? No. All right, Lolm says we're destined to lose. All right, so the law of large numbers is not on your side here. So make sure you're not you're not doing this or you're not playing any games of chance where you're destined to lose. If you ever come across a game of chance where the odds are against you, play once, place twice, and then get out of there, right? Don't be afraid to walk away. All right, so with that, uh, we're going to take a look at the beginnings of binomial distributions. I'll see you in a bit.